A while back, I told my mother that she was going to live forever. Her response? God, no! I was initially surprised by her response. After all, who doesn't want to live forever? Very quickly, I realized the problem. My mother, as well as most of humanity, they don't want to live forever in bodies that are failing them. And they can't imagine a body that doesn't fail them because their current body is all that they know. My mother's health has been declining for years, and lately, life has been a greater struggle because her body is deteriorating more rapidly, and there's no remedy for old age. But even many young people have bodies that have failed them and are failing them each and every day. It's sad and it's tragic. Nobody wants to be hobbling around forever in a rickety, broken down body. I recently slipped on some spilled liquid at a Target store in Des Moines, Iowa. The slip jacked up my left hip and I'm feeling the pain every day. I'll probably feel it the rest of my life. I understand what it's like to be in day-to-day -day pain, and I know there's people that suffer much more than me and have been for many years. God understands our dilemma, and I'm not surprised He has the perfect answer, immortality and incorruption. Currently, Christ Jesus is the only human that has immortality. 1 Timothy 6:16 6, from the Concordant Literal New Testament. Christ alone has immortality, making his home in light inaccessible, whom not one of mankind perceived, nor can be perceiving, to whom be honor and might eonian. Amen. The word immortality in this verse comes from the Greek word Athanasia, which occurs only three times in the Greek scriptures. Athanasia is a two-part word. The A is from the Greek letter alpha, which is here used as a negative prefix, meaning un, no, not, or without. Thanatia is from the Greek word thanatos, which means death. Combined, these two parts mean undeath, no death, without death. Hence, we have the proper translation immortality. I sometimes use the word deathlessness. God is the only one with eternal life, life that has no beginning and no end. Jesus died on the cross for all of our sins. He was entombed and he was roused the third day by God never to die again. He was vivified, which means to be given life beyond the reach of death. Jesus now has everlasting life. The phrase everlasting life is not found in the Greek scriptures, but the truth of everlasting life for Jesus and for the rest of humanity is based on this word, Athanasian, which means immortality. Just a few verses earlier in 1 Timothy 6, 13, we read that God will vivify all. 1 Timothy 6.13 from the Concordant Literal New Testament tells us of the God who is vivifying all. This amazing truth is confirmed for us further in 1 Corinthians 15.22-24. through 24. For even as in Adam all are dying, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified, yet each in his own class, the first fruit Christ, thereupon those who are Christ's in his presence, thereafter the consummation. All of humanity is dying and most will die because of our relationship with Adam. We were included in him. When he sinned, death passed through into all humanity. Thus also in Christ, the same all who are dying in Adam shall all be vivified. And again, vivification is being made immortal beyond the reach of death. There are three classes of vivification. The first fruit, Christ, he is the only one who currently has immortality. Thereupon, those who are Christ in his presence. Those are the people that believe in this life, and they will be vivified long before the rest of humanity. And in verse 24 tells us of the third class, thereafter the consummation. That is the remainder of humanity after Christ and after those who are vivified in his presence will be vivified at that time. God will vivify all. But, you may ask, how does this help me with my bad knees? If I have to live with these things forever, I'd rather be dead. I completely understand your concern. God uses another word to show us the durability of our future glorious bodies. 1 Corinthians 15, 42 through 44. Thus also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption. It is roused in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor. It is roused in glory. It is sown in infirmity. It is roused in power. It is sown a soulish body. It is roused a spiritual body. 
At the end of verse 42, we see the word incorruption. That word is from the Greek aphtharsia. It's another two-part word. It occurs in various forms 16 times in the Greek scriptures. The a prefix is in the negative, meaning un, no, not, or without. Tharsia means perish, waste away, corrupt, deteriorate, degenerate, decompose, break down, decay, or spoil. Therefore, the definition is uncorruption, unperish, or undecay. Here Paul is comparing our bodies to a seed that is planted. We die and we are planted in corruption. In verse 43, it is sown in dishonor, it is roused in glory. It is sown in infirmity and weakness, it is roused in power. It is sown or planted as a soulish body, it is roused a spiritual body. The bodies that we have are weak, they die, and they get buried. The bodies that we are roused with, the bodies that we are vivified with, are incorruptible. The bodies we will receive will not decay and they will not perish. The other two instances of Athanasian or immortality occur in 1 Corinthians along with Aptharsian, the word that we just looked at for in corruption. Here we see why you will want to be immortal and definitely not fear living forever. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 54. Lo, a secret to you am I telling. We all indeed shall not be put to repose, yet we all shall be changed. In an instant, in the twinkle of an eye, at the last trump. For he will be trumpeting, and the dead will be roused incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal put on immortality. Now, whenever this corruptible should be putting on incorruption, and this mortal should be putting on immortality, then shall come to pass the word which is written, Swallowed up was death by victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? In verse 51, Paul is telling the Corinthian believers that not everyone will die. Those believers who are alive at the return of Christ will not face death, but they will be instantly changed from mortal to immortal, from corruptible to incorruptible. And the believers who are dead at the time when Christ returns will be roused and also be made immortal and incorruptible. This is the second class of people that will be vivified along with the previously vivified Christ. And in verse 54, Paul expands to include the third class when he says, Now, whenever this corruptible should be putting on incorruption and this mortal should be putting on immortality. So he is including the final two classes to be vivified in this passage, showing that all will be made immortal and all will be made incorruptible. And the final great and glorious news that comes from the vivification of all, the deathless life for all, is this. At the end of verse 54, swallowed up was death by victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Death will not gain a final victory over one single person. Christ is the victor over death in all of its form, including the second death the lake of fire. Be encouraged by these powerful words from the Apostle Paul. There will be no death and no decay. And this is great news for all of us. And along with no death and no decay, there will be no doctors, no hospitals, no surgeries, no ER, no ambulances, no cemeteries, no wheelchairs, no bad left hips, no bad right hips, no canes, no bandages, no bad teeth, no eyeglasses, no blindness, no paralysis, etc., etc., etc. God's designs for us will be fulfilled. We will be immortal and incorruptible. Nobody wants to live forever in a rickety, decaying body, and no one, absolutely no one, will. Our Heavenly Father will do this because He loves us. Praise His name.